In our ongoing survey of the small catechism, as we work our way through the commandments, we turn now to the commandments that are less about honoring what God has done and who God is and turn more to loving our neighbor. And so we come to the fifth commandment, which is you shall not murder. For most of us, this is probably an easy one to say, I haven't murdered anybody, so I must be good to go. And yet there's more to it than that. The catechism asks, what does it mean to say you shall not murder? Luther answers, we are to fear and love God so that we neither endanger nor harm the lives of our neighbors, but instead, there's always that but instead, help and support them in all of life's needs. Luther teaches us here that what this means is we're not supposed to just avoid harming our neighbors, but we're supposed to help them. That's what it means to love your neighbor. Luther isn't making this up, once again. He draws it directly from the words of Jesus. In Matthew, the fifth chapter, Jesus says, you have heard it said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. That's some pretty harsh words. We're not only supposed to not physically harm or take the life away from our brothers and sisters, our neighbors in the world, we're not supposed to do anything to harm them, to be angry with them, to judge them, to speak ill of them, to call them names. And I don't know about you, I think we live in a world that majors in these things. We live in a world that is divided because we spend a lot of time harming our neighbors, trying to get the upper hand, getting in the line before they are in the line. We spend a lot of time listening to TV and ourselves on social media and other platforms calling people fools. I don't think we ever think that we are violating the commandment that says, you shall not murder. But for Luther and Jesus, that's precisely what we do. You see, the commandment here is a call to live at peace with everyone. It's a commandment that calls us not to give in to the violent impulses of our souls, but instead treat people like God treats them. That can be a challenge to us when we are so angry, filled with self-hatred and loathing. That can be hard to do in a world that is constantly competing, where you feel like if you don't fight for yourself, no one will fight for you. Or if you don't defeat somebody, then you'll be the loser. You shall not murder means more than don't just kill somebody. It means don't harm them in any way. And it sets a tone for how we live our lives as Christians. Jesus never harmed anyone. Read the Gospels. Read them over and over again. He may challenge he may even edge up towards saying something harsh, but never an insult. Jesus never harmed anybody, and we are expected never to harm anyone either. During this season of Lent, I'd like you to reflect with me on all the ways that we harm others and that we give up our commitment to the, violating the fifth commandment, you shall not murder. Let us pray. Holy God, it turns out that maybe more than we ever thought, we are murderous people, calling names, judging. We are people who are committed to living at odds with our neighbors, making ourselves look better than we are. We ask, Lord, that you would free us, center us in your love so that we don't need to get anything from anybody. Center us in your love so that we can therefore love others and at least never harm them. Not with our words, our deeds, our actions, or even our thoughts. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.